Good morning, good morning. This is Jacqueline Richardson with JJ Diamond, Jackie Deja, whatever y'all call me. Ooh, it's been a rough week, a rough two weeks, guys. Um, I pulled off of um, social media for a little bit uh, just to get my mind together. I've been going through a lot on my job. Um, they're really pissing me off, and I don't want to talk about it. Uh, <laughs> right now, I'm just going to stay focused on trying to sell my copyrights and um, finding investors for my diamond way to open up a store. Um, we, I also apply for a grant. They keep pushing dates back and doing all kind of mess that's like unreal. Uh, so I'm going to leave that grant thing alone. Um, and it's not only just, it's not just me. Um, they're targeting, they're targeting other people too. Um, I guess to look at their information and see what type of things they're doing to try to steal the ideas of um, businesses that's out here. Um, so if you if there are grant um, applications out there, I say do not don't don't put your information on them because they showed us bad. Um, bad. <laughs> I, I don't even know how to say it. You know, they didn't show us a good thing. They didn't give none of the people that um, I know applied a grant. Okay. And you can't tell me, you know, that these people are in business, you know, every single day and they wasn't qualified for these grants. You know, um, granted, you know, I work, so, you know, I'm not into my business as hard as I should be because I have to work. I'm a single mom, and um, they've made it very difficult for me um, trying to do business, be a mother, and try to work all, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a human being. They think I'm, I'm a superwoman, but I'm not. I'm a human being, and I need a break sometimes, you know, mentally, physically. Um, it's just too much for one human being. You know, um, but they think that you're an alien and you can do a million and one things and be a, a very successful person. And that would be not true. OK, um, so anybody that ever tell you I've done this by myself and uh, opened up a store and, and, and they, they're lying to you. They had to have help. OK, some way, somehow. There's no way possible you can do it all by yourself. OK, so um, with that being said. Um, I want to talk about business safety today. Okay. And the reason being is because I went out yesterday, you know, yesterday was, um, world frog day or sweet frog day or something like that. You know, you know, my daughter, she likes the little events and you know, I'm the type of mother that, um, I engage, you know, um, I engage with a lot of the things that the kids do. Why? Because they need a, an adult to oversee um, what they're getting their lives into, okay? Uh, so, uh, you know, I'm that adult, you know, and I have a, a team of other parents that's been working with me, you know, to oversee the kids uh, when I'm not available uh, due to me working or whatever else, you know, whatever else I have to do. So shout out to you guys um, for participating and making sure that these kids stay safe and we know what they're getting into. Uh, of course, y'all know I want to open up a store. And it, it's a lot, you know, it's a lot. Um, just trying to prepare, you know, I don't even have the money yet, but trying to prepare mentally for it. And... Um, putting down all your your guidelines and what you want to do and how you want to do things when you open up your store. Because as we know, we do have, um, we can make some of our own rules. We can't make all of our rules, but we have to stay under certain guidelines, you know. Um, however, um, you can make some rules and have some policies of your own, okay? You just got to check with the government to make sure that it is in correspondence with their policies, you know, and that's what a lot of companies don't do, especially some of these big companies. They want to have their own policies and don't correspond with what the government has set forth um, on their land, okay? Because at the end of the day, we might buy land from the government and open up our stores, 
However, when them employees leave that land, they go back on government land. And we still have to be in correspondence with what the government has set forth. Okay. So I want to talk about what happened in Sweet Frog, y'all. It was like so crazy. (laughs) Uh, We went to Sweet Frog and of course we are um, reward member holders. You know, um, a lot of these places have the reward member holders. You know, when you go there frequently, you know, um, they have a special day that you can either get something at a discounted price or for free. So we decided to go and um, support our local business. You know, we try to support all the black and white local businesses, Italian business. It doesn't matter. We try to support all the businesses because they all go through the same thing. It's not uh, a color that's involved. You know, even though uh, Charlotte has been big on um, promoting black businesses and the reason being is because Charlotte hides a lot of their black businesses. Okay. I didn't realize until last year how many black people have businesses here in Charlotte. And the reason why I didn't realize it is because they hide them. Um, I had to find them in a building uh, where nobody can see them. Okay. So it makes it a a little bit harder for them. And that's not the type of business I want to run. You know, I come from New York or in Maryland where our black businesses are on front street. You know, you can walk down the street and there's black businesses everywhere. You know, so I felt very, um, What's the word can I use, guys? Um, Disgusted, really, you know, to see that they were hiding all of our black businesses. Um, So my business, if I decide to open up a store here in Charlotte, I will not be a black business that will be hiding. I will be on forefront, in the front with everybody else, um, meaning uh, on one of these blocks where y'all can see me, y'all can pull up, okay? And even if you just... Driving past, you can see me. That's the type of business I will have in this state if I decide to open up a a business here in this state. If not, I will be taking my business back to Maryland where black people are appreciated in business. Okay, now I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, But anyway, so we go to the Sweet Frog and we get our stuff. And um, they was out of vanilla. The vanilla uh, machine was broken down uh, about a week ago when we went. Um, Because I take, well, every parent is supposed to, however, um, they don't do it. But every parent is supposed to uh, take a day out with your kid, you know, whether it be the park, uh, go have a Starbucks, have a sweet frog. It doesn't matter. You're supposed to take a time out once a week to do that with your child. Whether people know it or not, it's the law. Okay. But a lot of people don't know the law. Okay, you're supposed to give your children activity every week. Well, technically, um, here in United States, it's supposed to be once a month. Okay, um, a lot of places felt like that. That a lot of like uh, child protective services. Y'all know I was in foster care, so in foster care they do things a little bit different um, because within a month time, a child could be and went crazy because they haven't had an outing. OK, so uh, Child Protective Services does once a week. OK, you must have some type of entertainment. OK, an outing nature. OK, that is the law in Child Protective Services. <clears throat> I do. I don't I know if Child Protective Services um, overcomes the government law. Because they protect children. I don't know if they have their own funded uh, government agency. I don't know. Um, I will have to look into that. Um, However, I do know for a fact, being in uh, child protective services, being in group homes um, for many, many years, um, I know that it's a once a week thing. So I follow those rules because I was taught by my government. Okay. You know, a lot of people say to me, Oh, um, like pretty much, how did you learn all of this stuff? Well, I was in foster care. Okay. And when being in foster care, there's certain rules that apply. (laughs) Okay. And you have to follow them. The, the, The foster care agencies have to follow them. Uh, the parents that take you in as, as y'all know, my family took me in. So I was in foster care kinship. 
<coughs> when I got pregnant with my oldest daughter, Shaquana, um, I went into um, uh, group homes, pregnancy group homes. Um, and it was a certain type of way and rules that they had to follow. Okay, um, and it's to this day in certain group homes, uh, they still have the rules that apply, okay, that certain things have to be done a certain way. So I lived my life by that, okay, even though I was raised by my mom, I was raised by my aunts, I was raised by my uncles, I still was raised with government rules, okay, so I've learned as a parent to follow those government rules, uh, to stay out of the CPS scene, okay? Um, what led me to <laughs> foster care. I don't want my children to go down that path, okay? Because I misconduct myself, okay? And we're going to spend too much time on that. However, I just wanted to throw that out there, Um but when it comes to the workplace safety, okay, and this is what we're talking about today because I was getting a little too deep with the, the foster care scene. But anyway, but that's why me and Egypt was out, okay, because I stick by that rule. I try to give my child at least once a week, once every two weeks because I can't always afford it. Um, and now they have made it so bad where I can't even afford gas to drive to the park, Okay, so sometimes we got to even do it on foot. You know, I'm, some some of the people in the community have seen me in Egypt, you know, out running, you know, um, doing exercise. But it's still nature, okay? And it is the law to give your child some type of, um, I wouldn't always say entertainment, but give them nature. Give them um Entertainment, <laughs> entertainment is not always the TV or video games. So we was out getting our weekly, you know, snack um, at Sweet Frog. So one of the employees um, came and she was looking like really scared in the face. So as the other employee was ringing me in Egypt out, um, she's like, um, is somebody at the door? And every time I ask who it is, they're covering the peephole and you can see it in her face. She was, she was scared. And, um, she said, but I, I don't want to open the door cause I don't know what they're going to do. So she said, I'm going to go check in the back. And you know, she, the other girl was looking at her like, should you do that? But she didn't say anything. She just was like, should you do that? Like that look, you know, like, like what? No. And um, she said, but I got to go check because, you know, it was customers in the store. So she don't want to open up the door. Somebody push in with a gun or something like that. So I get her theory and how she was trying to handle it. Um, so I asked her, y'all know I have a concealed... um." permit and with that concealed permit a lot comes with it and this is why i feel that everyone that carries a gun should have a concealed it shouldn't even be given until they have gotten it concealed okay even though north carolina um laws um is that you can get a gun you know just apply for a permit get every time you want to get a gun you just apply for a permit however if y'all know Governor Cooper, I guess, you know, been listening because <laughs> I've been talking about gun safety. And he has uh, proposed to make it where people have to get the training that's needed to carry a gun. However, within that training, when you go to conceal uh, your concealed class, um, in concealed class, they will tell you that you can, prote you can protect other pedestrians. Okay? So you get the right to help others, okay? So you're not only carrying the gun just for yourself, you're carrying it for other people that's out there too and their safety as well, okay? So, you know, like sometimes when I roll up with my gun on my hip in some stores, they happy to see me. <laughs> and then I go to some places and people be scared. But that's because they don't know the rules and they don't know the laws. However, yesterday, 
you know, y'all know I always keep my gun on me. But I keep it in the car. Because I don't feel like I need it certain in certain areas. Well, yesterday, I did need it. But I had it. But it was in the car. It wasn't physically on me. You know, and I have to learn to change my fashion, guys. I need to wear <laughs> clothes that, have a, that I could wear a belt on a regular basis, okay? So, y'all hear me trying to make some clothes where I could wear a belt, okay? Um, I had on one of my outfits from China and um and of course I didn't have no belt loops so I couldn't wear a belt so I don't wear my holster so I told I said hold on hold on I said you sure you want to go back there wait I said um I have a gun so I can go get my gun and we can go back there together and she was like okay okay so I ran in the car I got the gun I realized I didn't have a holster um, I didn't want to walk in the street with it out, you know, so I just put it in a bag and um, we went. So this is the killer right here, guys. <laughs> We're going behind the building, okay? And I told her to stay behind the wall. And she runs out there. Now, if it was somebody that was out there with a gun, she could have gotten shot. And that's why I'm talking about this today. Okay. When we got over there, um, I was behind the wall, you know, police style. You know how, how they do. You know? <laughs> so, you know, I wanted to peek first, you know, and see. But by this point, she done ran out there and I'm telling her, no. You always wait. We were supposed to talk to the suspect before we turn that corner. Because we don't know what we're going into once we turn that corner. Okay? And that's what I had wanted to do. But she just ran out. Okay? And so this is why I'm bringing this to the forefront. She could have gotten seriously hurt if it was somebody that wasn't right back there. Luckily, it was just her manager banging on the door. Um... But if it wasn't, she could have got seriously hurt. Now, the procedure is when you are on the blind side, meaning you have a wall there to protect you. You talk to them behind the wall. Then you let them know that you're armed. Then you step out once you've peeked to see if they are armed. And ask them what they're doing there. They don't have to physically see who you are. And you don't need to put your whole body out there uh, to see what's going on. You peek and come back. So, I feel that, you know, when I open up my business, everybody has their own policies. Um, however... And Sweet Frog, y'all know I love y'all. I love the whole community um, out, out, out in Matthews. Uh, everybody's very nice and very sweet, you know. But I do think that you guys need to have a gun safety. I mean, uh, um, sorry. A safety workplace training. Okay, because it disturbed me. Y'all know I'm an activist for the children, so I must speak on it. I'm sorry. Um, I wouldn't be right if I didn't. I wouldn't be able to sleep at night if I didn't, you know. Um, she should have known to stay behind that wall. So I'm not saying you have to... The, the kids that's working need to go to these concealed classes... Um, but the, the owner of the workplace needs to have the certifications needed to teach their employees what the, to do and what not to do to protect them. Okay. Technically, um, she should have locked the doors. Okay. This is the way I would have saw fit. If it was if it was my store, I would have locked the door, okay, 
and called the police. That would have been step one. Okay. Um, that's the way we're supposed to handle it. Now, if they would try to come through the back door, I would have let them know if, if I was armed. If I'm not armed, I would have just had to wait for the police. But if I'm armed, um, I would have had to let them know, you need to stop because I am armed. So if you come through the door, I'm going to shoot you. I'm letting you know that. So I'm, I'm, I'm armed. Go away. Um, and that's the way we're supposed to handle it. We're supposed to involve the police. However, we do know that the police take a long time to come. Okay. And then she had customers in the store. So with the customers being in the store, you don't want to scare the customers, but then you don't want the customers to get hurt either. Okay. And then you don't want to put yourself in a bad situation as well. Okay. Now, when I did meet the manager afterwards and talk to her, um, she was telling me how there was a, a person that came in, um, I guess they had mental illness or whatever, because y'all know the mental ill get to walk around free here in, in Charlotte, North Carolina, um, where they get to walk free a lot of places. However, they have the adequate uh, places for them to be, where Charlotte does not have that. Okay, they put them in a hospital for seven days and kick them back to the streets instead of trying to get them uh, in better situations. Okay, so, you know, North Carolina still has a lot of work to do, people. You know, as I speak, I mean, this is a beautiful city. They have made the city so beautiful. However, they still have a lot of work to do. They haven't even met half of what they need to do. Okay, I could talk to y'all all day about the things that North Carolina needs to do to fix a lot of problems to make this place uh, a better place to be. Okay. Um, so, you know, the mental ill walks around everywhere. So they go in the stores, if they're hungry, you know, they're out begging, you know, sometimes they just stand in the streets because, you know, their minds is all messed up. They be hungry. They want money. You know, we go through a lot down here. It's very stressful when you go outside. So this is why I don't even like going outside for real. However, I still got to go out and take my child, you know, and let her get some air. Um, outside of school and um, her, you know, activities, meaning her, um, her sports activities, which is over now, but she needs more <laughs> because it's so stressful when you, you pull up to a, par, a a light, you know, they out there asking for money, you know, and I don't mind giving it if I have it, you know, but sometimes I don't have it. And when you don't have it, you know, well, what can you do? And you feel sorry for these people. You know, but this is what they've done to them. This is what they've put them through, you know. So they don't know how to react. So they, they, you know, harassing people for food or money, you know. And if they're not getting it, they have episodes. And then we're subject to these episodes. So anyway, going back to what I was saying about the manager, she was telling me how someone had an episode, came in, jumped over the counter and I guess tried to take money or food or whatever they was trying to get. However, she did mention, you know, she said, um, do you think I could have my gun on me here at the store? And I said, you should be able to. You're in an establishment where you have to, to you're serving and protecting. You have customers that come in here, sit and eat, of course. But I told her to make sure that that it is correct. Go and get your concealed. Now, if she had her concealed, she would have known better that she is able to protect her customers and protect her employees in their establishment as long as it's okay with the owner. That's just like having a police officer or a security guard walk, walking through your establishment. So I say that to say, one, we need to put in place when we open up these businesses, safety trainings. We, we take it for granted that because we're little businesses, you know, we're not as big as businesses like Amazon or Harris Teeter Publix, you know, and places like that. 
we take it for granted. We don't need that. However, we still do, even though we have a small business. Because people do target small businesses as well. And you got to be prepared. Your employees have to be prepared. And that's just what it is. You know, like um, I'm going to use where I work. I work at Amazon. Y'all know that. Once you go through the gates in Amazon, you are pretty much locked down. You're, you're in there. Okay. No one can get in or no one can get out unless you have a badge. So safety, when it comes to safety, he has that lockdown and we have security guards and we have cameras everywhere. I mean, part of it is for our safety. The other part is for the people that be stealing. You know how that go. You, people's always trying to steal, you know. Um, however, safety, top notch safety. Okay. I mean, it's so tight, the police can't even get in there. They got to knock on the door and talk through the window. Okay? <laughs> That's how safe my environment is at Amazon. Okay? When it comes to, uh, I mean, we may not be safe from the machinery or or falling downstairs or something like that. but Because uh, that's common um, accidents. But when it comes to um, something physically happening or, you know... Um, well, I find it to be safe. I'm going to just say that. Okay. We have plenty of doors uh, we can go out of, even if um, we can't get out the front door, you know, and we, we have safety, um, what they call it, like fire drills, you know, every so often, you know, just how they do in school, you know, we got to go outside and stand and wait and you know how that goes, you know, um, however, that's a big business. But even with small businesses, we still need to have fire safety, robbery safety, gun safety. Okay, if somebody came in with a gun, what do you do? <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, we have to live this life not afraid, but just be ready for the worst. Okay, I was always taught you prepare for the worst and hope for the best. Okay? That was how I was raised. We always prepare for the worst and pray and hope for the best. But you got to be ready. And that's just the bottom line. So when Miss JJ here, Jacqueline, opened up her store <coughs> and she has employees, my employees will have to take a safety video. My employees will have to actually engage in if, if something happened. Uh, we will go through like examples in the stores, you know, like on a day that there's no customers, we would do uh, like a little training on how, you know, physical training. On how, if something occurred, what would you do? Okay, it's not going to be just the video. We're gonna we're gonna actually do it. Okay, just like when, you know, people think I'm crazy <laughs> sometimes. But if this is the way I was taught, I was taught by the government. I can't help. Well, government rules. I'm sorry. I was taught by government rules. I grew up in a house with a, um, a veteran. I was in forced to care, you know, so all the rules that applied in my life was the way the government set the rules up, okay? And um, people think I'm crazy because, like, when I, <laughs> you would come to, through to my house, I would have a fire, um, a fire, uh, like, exit thingy on my wall here, you know? They're like, what is this? And I'm like, how would you want to escape if something go down, you know? And um, they look at me and be like, what? But you got to even do it in your home. The people that's in your home need to know the easiest way to get out if there's a fire. And what to do next. 
I had fire extinguishers. Um, when I first came to Charlotte, I, there was no fire extinguishers in my house. And I was saying to myself, I'm not used to this. I, I, I got to go back up north. You know, I can't, I can't deal with this. But then I remembered that I can go out and purchase my own fire extinguishers, you know, and, and, and be safe. You know, and these are the things I teach my own children, you know, how to protect themselves. So, yes, every now and again, I might do a fire drill. I ask my daughter if she's scared, you know, to jump out the window if she has to. You know, off the balcony. Because you just never know where fire is going to. And sometimes, well, quiet is kept. I love my fire department here in North Carolina. They is Johnny on the spot. When you call them, they is at your house in no time. So if something is burning up in here, I already know they're coming. So I'm just going to stay put one area and wait for them and maybe a ladder will come up. I don't have to jump. But just in case I do have to jump, I've looked out the window several times and said, okay, I think I can do that fall. <laughs> I think I can make it down. But I've showed my daughter how to tie sheets. Um... And um, lower herself. I've taught her about the fire extinguisher. Matter of fact, I think we need to do a refresher because she forgets a lot. So I'm going to work on that this week, giving her a refresher on um, spraying the fire extinguisher and um, getting out the house if need be, Um, closing the doors, where to go, you know, for safety. Uh, We've done uh, hurricane um, safety. Um, I don't know if y'all seen my videos where I make a bed in the closet for us and put food and everything just in case uh, the hurricane blows out the windows. Because you know during a hurricane, you don't need to be uh, near windows and glass. Uh, So we go in our closet. We have a walk-in closet. So we go into our closet where there's no windows and we can stay low. You know, um, tornadoes, the same with tornadoes. You know, I taught my daughter about that. And I think I did put something about that on online as well, you know. But these are the things you need to know just in case. Okay? You you just never know. I met some people up in Greensboro that went through the the hurricane when... uh, I mean, sorry, not the hurricane, the tornado. When the tornado tore up Greensboro. Greensboro is right up the road. And it tore up the city of Greensboro, not the suburbs. So we take it for granted because we live in the city. We're not going to have no no uh, tornadoes coming through or no hurricanes coming through. Well, you can take it for granted if you want to. I remember three years ago going out to Matthews. Was it after a hurricane or was it after a tornado? I can't remember which one it was that came through. But it tore Matthews up. There was trees blocking. We had to detour. It was crazy. That was God stuff. That wasn't those little signs, the detour signs that, the, you know, these construction workers put up. That was stuff that the, the, the weather tore down. And I witnessed it right here in the suburbs of Charlotte. I mean, of, um, well, the what they call it, the, um, what we call it up north, Tri-State. The tri-state areas. Our tri-state areas um, outside of Charlotte is Matthews, Man Hill, Huntersville, um, Gastonia, um, uh, Indian Trail. Uh, but that's right outside Charlotte, right outside of Charlotte. Concord. Those are all our tri-state areas. Okay, outside of Charlotte. And these hurricanes and tornadoes can go through and tear it up. So you still have to be ready. You have to be ready. And that's just what it is. Um, even with war. It, they came here and decided to have a war here in Charlotte. You have to be ready. Don't think it can't happen. I lived in a, a, a state where I saw... Terrorism. 
okay, and and had to stay at work because dead bodies was coming through because they had nobody else, to, no place else to take them. That's when the World Trade, you know, um, the two planes hit the World Trade. There was so many bodies. It was bring. I was in the Bronx working at Bronx Lebanon our Hospital. And they was bringing bodies all the way from Manhattan to the Bronx. So that tells you how many people was dying or died. But we was part of the tri-state. The Bronx is part of, of Manhattan is the center of New York City. <clears throat> and everything around it is the tri-state. The Bronx, Staten Island, uh, Brooklyn. Queens. Same with Charlotte. We have Charlotte. We got Concord. We got Harrisburg. We got Huntersville. We got um, Matthews, Mint Hill. And you can find hospitals and all that same stuff that's in Charlotte in these tri state areas. So you always have to prepare for the worst and hope for the best, even in businesses. Because people will try you. And with us having a lot of people that's mentally ill here, it makes it a little bit more difficult. Because you don't know, you know, what they're going to do. And then you say to yourself, well, do I, do I adopt this mental ill person? You know? And then this is the other thing, too. And they had this on the radio recently. If y'all been listening to Tune In, um, there's a commercial that comes on and say, yes, this person knows because they've been sleeping behind a restaurant. Imagine owning a restaurant or owning a store and you go out to take the trash and there's someone sleeping behind your restaurant. You don't know what they're going to do. They're going to get up and try to hurt you or they just want something to eat or they just needed a place to sleep. You don't know. So you got to be safe. And prepared. We call them in New York, well, we call them vagrants. I used to work for a security company, and we used to go out to the Chase Banks, even though I can't stand Chase anymore, um, <laughs> even though I bank with them. <clears throat> I used to be one of the security guards that would go and um, at night to check the vaults and make sure that the vaults were locked, Okay. Now, people think that, I don't know what goes on here in Charlotte, but in New York City, y'all know New York City is a very big city, okay? And people can get into the banks even at night. So, I was one of the ones that would go to the bank and physically go in the bank, okay? And make sure that the vault was still locked, there was no tellers left out, okay? Um, if there was vagrants in the ATM area, meaning, um, well, bombs are mentally ill, um, sleeping because people will sleep in New York. People will sleep inside the ATM areas because it'd be cold. They need to be warm. So they wait until somebody comes out or goes in, they go in and they sleep in there. Same with the post office. When you go to drop your mail, that's another place that stays open 24 hours. So sometimes you might see a vagrant inside the post office. You might see him inside um, the banks. This is why we try not to even go out at night. This is why we don't even go get cash anymore. Because nobody has that time to do. We don't have time for that because we don't know if these vagrants is going to try to rob us or if these vagrants is just there because they just need a roof over their head for the night. But you got to be safe. So what uh, Chase did was hire security to go and check to make sure that the vagrants wasn't messing with their customers. Um, and that 
nobody was able to get inside of the um, the banks. As we know, we have computer specialists, ITs, and <clears throat> they can break all kind of codes, meaning uh, security. Uh, they can um, break bank vaults. They can break all kind of stuff. You know, that's why I don't even want to be an IT. Don't even put me in that field because I don't know how to do none of that stuff and I don't want to do none of that stuff. But they have people out here that does do that type of scams. You know, they will cut the security off with their computers. They will uh, cut off the, uh, open up certain safes with their computers. You know, uh, they have all kind of gadgets, you know, and I will go out. Um, at night, I worked a night shift. It was hard, uh, but I did it. Um, you do what you got to do sometime when you got to take care of your kids. Um, but I will go out and um, go to these different Chase banks all night. And I mean from all the way up from Connecticut back down to Manhattan every night. And the time went by fast. Eight hours went by quick because every bank that we had to go into, um, we would have to write a um, a description of what we saw. If there was a teller left out, if there was um, the safe look open, the vault look open, um, if there was vagrants. So we had to write all that stuff down. If everything was good, we just checked off that everything looked good and we came up out of there. Okay, and if something was out of place, we had to put it down. So, yeah, these things happen all the time. And you have to prepare. And some companies will go to the extreme to protect their company, just like how Chase did. Because you just never know what these vagrants are into. Or what they're doing. Or if they even posing as a vagrant. So we have to be careful out here. So business safety is number one key. Especially for small businesses. Because if it was somebody back there. The young girl that went with me to the back. and I, went, I mean I went with her to the back. She could have gotten hurt. By running out there like that. And we're not in the business to try to get hurt. We're in the business to try to stay safe. Her manager did say that, you know, she wants to uh, upgrade some things. So that way, you know, they can be a little bit more safer. But you would think that in Matthews, she would be safe. You're safe nowhere. People are crazy everywhere. You just have to be ready. Keep a sound mind. I know it sounds tough, y'all, when I say sound mind. Meaning, don't be high, don't be drunk. Because you miss stuff. One wrong move and it could cost you your life because your brain is lagging because you've been high or drunk. Just like the computers lag, that's how your brain do when you be high and drunk. This is why we only get high and drunk at home. And we stay home. And you still got to be ready at home because you just never know. People moving around in your house, you sleeping, you know, and people cooking and all kinds. Of, hold on. You gotta be you gotta be focused. I take life very serious. And I think that God took me down the journeys that I needed to um understand what my purpose was. He took me down that journey so not only I can understand what my purpose is, but then I can teach my purpose. Why don't engage in the same things that some of these other people engage in? You know, they make fun of me. Oh, she don't drink. 
She don't get high. She don't eat this. She don't do that. Well, God took me down journeys and put me in situations where if I was intoxicated or I was impaired, I wouldn't have made it out of that situation. Because my brain would have been laggy. So do y'all understand why I don't drink that much? Every now and again, I'll have some wine. I don't smoke weed anymore. Even though I be feeling like I need to. Because my job stresses me out so bad. I wish that I could take a blunt to the head sometimes. That's how stressed I be. But I just smoke my cigarettes and I'm good. And that's the life of Miss J.J. Diamond. <laughs> For those that don't know, Jackie or whatever y'all call me. I smoke my cigarettes and, and keep moving. Because the cigarettes does not impair my brain. And I tell a lot of people, you know, like with my diamond way, you know, it keeps my lungs open. So y'all notice I don't even cough that much anymore. Unless I re- I'm really having a bad allergy attack. That's why I'm so thankful for my Diamond Way. And this is why I try to give it to you guys as much as possible. Because it's it's, it's, it's not even my product. And I'm going to be honest with you. It's God's product. Because it's all natural. I'm only presenting what he's taught me throughout my journey. I give it to you guys. And I like myself. I do my diamond way bath every day. And I every well, almost every day. I'm not gonna say every day because I don't I don't do it as much as I used to because I don't be in as much pain as I used to. But then most sometimes I need it for my allergies. So, you know, to keep my nose open, to keep my lungs open, you know. A lot of people still don't believe I've never had COVID. Every time I've been tested, I've never had it. Even this last time when I got sick and I went to the hospital, they didn't know what I had. He couldn't even diagnose me. He told me, thug it out. I thugged it out for 24 hours, almost 48, and I was back at it. Whatever it was, I put my eucalyptus on. And I had to feed feed whatever it was. And I was back swifty again. You know? I mean, a little eh, down a little bit because I was feeling sick. But whatever it was, whatever bug it was, I got it out of me fast. And I did that with staying hydrated and my, um, my treatments. My diamond weight treatments. <clears throat> so this is why I give it to you guys and hopefully soon you know I'm I'm still trying to sell these copyrights you know um, first I'm going to get me a home for my kids and once I get my home I will be looking for a store to put my products in so people can pull up and purchase because it's becoming stressful for me too as well trying to meet people you know, my car is not right, you know, and people want they want the product, but they live all the way on the other side of town and I got to drive all the way over there. It's just too much. And I work. So it's just too much. So what I've done is just sat, the, the, sat it down. You know, I try to, some customers, you know, uh, my loyal, I try to uh, accommodate them, but searching for new customers, I haven't been doing too tough, but now we're on Google. Y'all can check us out. Make that call if y'all want the product. Um, I'm hopefully, hope, hopefully, uh, this spring. If I don't get a store, I will be out in the flea markets, uh, so y'all can try the product and um, become those loyal customers, like the loyal customers that I have right now. Uh, and then eventually, maybe I'll be able to open up a store. You know, um, if the copyrights don't sell. But that's my main goal. 
um, for Diamond Way and to help you guys stay healthier. Um, and the product actually too relaxes you, you know, um, sometime, and I, this is just the reality of it. I'm just going to tell you the truth. Um, I do my Diamond Way bath at night sometimes. And when I do it, I, I by the time I get to the bed, I'm like straight out between working hard at work and then allowing my body to relax. Because you know when you work so much, um, it's hard for your body to relax. So you come home and you're t- tossing and turning, trying to go to sleep. You're watching TV. You try to do everything possible to make yourself sleepy. But your body is still going. Okay? Well, that's what uh, Diamond Way helps you do. Relax. Just like if you smoke some weed. Because that's how I be feeling. I be like, damn, that's okay. And I hit the get in the bed and I be like, whoa, sleep. <sighs> Out. Next next thing, I, I don't even dream. Okay? Very rarely. I may have a dream maybe once every six months. Okay? Because I be so tired and out of it. And then the diamond way just relaxes me just enough for me to get that good night's sleep. And be back up and ready to add it the next day. You know? Because people look at me and they say, well, how is it? You 52 years old. You run around. You be jumping and playing basketball. And you... you <clears throat> uh, dancing and and I be in pain sometimes and I gotta do my down away treatments and I be snappy back back at it. So I know there's a God. That's why I talk. That's why I talk about God every day. You know, matter of fact, the day that I got sick or whatever I had that the doctor couldn't diagnose, I had prayed. Right, I'm always praying. I had prayed and I said. I said, um, Jesus, help me. And then I got a bad cough, right, real hard. <laughs> and I'm like, what in the world? I said, I felt like I was going to die that cough. So I said, I got that COVID. That's what I was saying to myself. I said, I got that COVID. I said, you can lift this. I got up and I put on my infuser. And then I start feeling better. I said, okay. All right. Now, the next day, I felt like I had a fever because I was getting dehydrated. So I said, ooh, I think I better go see the doctor. So I put in an appointment to me to go to the urgent care. And I get over there. And, you know, the first thing they think is COVID. So he said, well, first, first things we got to do is rule out the COVID and the flu. I said, okay. So he took them tests, you know, sticking me up in my nose and the the, the flu tests and all that stuff. And he said, well, I got good news and I got bad news. So I'm like, well, what's the good news? So he was like, um, what's one you want? I said, well, give me the bad news first. He was like, I don't know what you got. Because it ain't COVID or the flu. I said, well, you just gave me the bad news and the good, good news. He said, but all I can tell you to do is stay hydrated and rest. That was during Christmas um, break. You know, during Christmas break, Amazon makes us work uh, six days, I mean, five days a week, 10 hours a, a week, which is unfair. I feel like it's unfair. Um, <clears throat> that's most jobs. They um would do, oh, you have to work uh, maybe twice a month over time, mandatory over time, or maybe um, once a month, mandatory over time. He makes us do mandatory over time for six weeks straight, okay? So our bodies get broken down. Um, our mental get broken down, and we just be a, a hot mess, and I'm going to just give it to y'all straight. Luckily, I got through it with only two days of being sick. There's some people that had to go longer than that. You know, there were some people that even caught the COVID, okay, throughout that duration of time. Um, there was people that couldn't breathe. Everybody was aggravated. Matter of fact, yesterday I ran into a guy at work. I didn't even know him, but he was sick. The story is so funny to me because he was sick. Like, we all at work struggling, going through the same thing, mandatory overtime, trying to get through these five days, 10 hours. <clears throat> and I was hot. 
you know, because, you know, you're moving around, you know, you're packing, you're moving around, I'm sweating, popping sweat, and I'm like, oh, my God, I can't take it, so I want the fan on. So, but the fan also messes with my allergies, so I'm having a bad allergy attack as well. So I'm popping allergy medicine like crazy, and I'm hot, and I'm like, oh, my God, they got the heat on because it's winter time, and I'm like, but well, we moving around in here. Why do y'all have the heat on 80 or whatever the, they had it on? It's keep it, don't even turn the heat on. We moving around in here. Who do we, ever says that we're cold? We never say we're cold in that building. They have the heat on. I'm like, y'all got to be kidding me. We about to fall out. So now, he comes, and he's like, he's coughing and stuff, and he's like, I'm sick, and you got this fan blowing. I said, well, I'm hot, <laughs> right? So, we go back and forth. So, I go to my supervisor saying, listen, me and this guy, we going back and forth. I'm burning up, because they got the heat on blast, and I can't breathe, and he's sick. He coughing. He don't want no fan air on him. So, they was like, all right, well, we'll move you. And that way you can go somewhere else and put the fan on you. I said, okay, that's fine. So, I go back, right, to get my stuff. And I said, I'm moving. So, you can turn the fan off. So, I grabbed my stuff. He rolled his eyes at me. <laughs> so, I'm like, oh, no, he didn't roll his eyes at me. I said, I thought you wanted the fan off. I'm leaving. Why are you angry? You getting what you wanted and you're angry. So, a <laughs> couple of days later, he sees me. He's like, hey, how you doing? I said, I'm fine. How you doing? <laughs> He's like, I'm better. I'm better. I said, you know you gave me the blues. And he was like, yeah, I know because I was sick. I said, I wouldn't want to live in a house with your butt because if I lived in a house with you, We'll be fighting over the air and the, air and the, and the heat. So he started laughing. <laughs> but anyway, that incident got us speaking every single day now when we see each other. Okay, we had a bad incident, but it brought us closer together. If y'all get what I'm trying to say. So now, like yesterday, he was walking. He was coming in. And I waited. I didn't know if, if I was, I should open up the door. He should open up the door. And he opened up the door. And I said, I, I didn't know if you should open up the door. But I should open up the door because I saw you on your way. And I didn't want to get in your way. Because I know how you can get. And he was like, no, I'm going to open up the door for you. And I said, oh, okay. So we went in. But the point that I'm trying to make is, you know, sometimes companies have to see where it can be an inconvenience for people, you know, And we try at my job to, we try as much as we can to deal with other people's issues. You know, meaning if they have illnesses, if they're sick, allergies, uh, different things like that. Um, But they don't realize that we put up with a lot. You know, we're dealing with a lot of different people, a lot of different characters, a lot of different personalities, you know, and... It can mess with your mind. So that's another reason too. Like, you know, I be feeling like I want to get high or drink. Because let me tell you something. If it would have been back in the day and I was working over there, I would be walking out the building, running up to the liquor store, getting me a bottle of Hennessy. That's how bad it stresses people out. You know, so I come home, I use my diamond way and it relaxes me so I don't think about the place until the next morning when I get up. You know, so I say all that to say, sometimes we don't always have to go to drugs and liquor. You know, we can use other resources to help us relax. And that's one of the things that God God has presented because we all need a stimulant some type of way. There's no person on this earth that does not have a stimulant that they use to keep their mind and body intact. And and from from being un how can I say? Wait a minute, I want to get it out correctly. 
for being under attack from stress. Because stress is the number one killer. And I've been talking about stress being the number one killer for over 10 years. And it's taken out the late 20s all the way to early 40s. It's taken them out. They're dying faster than people in my era. So I say that to say that we definitely have to get these stimulants out here. The stimulants that we know it's not going to kill you that fast. Or break down all your... Um, break down your body and your brain. Because hard drugs break down your brain. So we don't focus properly. We don't think properly. We make stupid decisions because we were impaired. But when you use stuff that's not... Um, for the mental and just for the body, it helps a little bit better. But then we got all these man-made things, like just like the um, I forget what they call it. A lot of people went from smoking to vaping, vaping, vaping gives people CPOD or COPD or whatever it is. But yet, and still. You got more people that smoke cigarettes that ain't never had CPOD or COPD. And then you have things that can help the smokers, meaning God's products. Organic products that help the lungs stay open, help the lungs from being uh, scarred. Because that's how you catch cancer when there's a... <clears throat> if you notice... <clears throat> Almost everyone that has has had cancer, and I'm going to talk about this in another podcast, and I'm about to end this podcast, but I just want to throw this at you guys. If you if there's a person that you know that's had cancer, somehow, some way, where they had cancer at, they've been injured some kind of way. That area was weak, and the cells could not cure it. So it needed help. We take it for granted that if we don't go to the doctor, if we don't get tested for certain things, it'll just go away. No, sometimes that scarring stays there and it must be healed. Whether you are healed by the doctor or you are healed by the agents that God has put on our earth to help us heal. It's under attack because it's weak there. So once we've learned to now heal ourselves and try to heal them properly so we won't get cancer and eat the proper things to kill the cancer cells, or slow them down. Cancer probably won't no longer exist. But we have to get everybody to that point. Into that era. And it's going to be a process. But we still have to get people to that point. Into that era. I don't see it happening for the next era. But I do see it happening for like my grandson's era. My, my great grandson's era. Where they will be cancer free. Because we're still having babies getting cancer right now. So I do see by the time the end of his era. Or like when he's grown like my age. Cancer shouldn't exist anymore. And that's what we're trying to get to. Of course, I'm not going to see it in my lifetime. Just like I said, babies are getting it. And that's the problem. How are these babies being born with cancer? They're not. Their cells are weak. And people are not doing the things that they're supposed to do. To protect them. 
I, the other day, I seen a girl outside. Now that we would, when I was coming out, we would never do this. And all my kids during the winter months wore hats, even during the summer months. Sometimes I covered their head. That's the way the older people did it. That's what I was taught. They couldn't teach me everything because they didn't know everything. But some of the things that they did teach me, I held on to. And it worked. Just like my daughter asked me the other day. She said, Mom, I got an innie. I said, yeah. She said, well, how is it I got an innie, but other people don't have innies? My belly button is perfect. I said, I know. <laughs> she was like, well, how did you do that? <laughs> How did that happen? How is it that we got innies and some people don't have innies? I said, well, my family taught me to tape a $50, a 50 cent piece or a quarter to your bellies when you was born. And she was like, that's why we all have innies. I said, yep. She said, oh, okay. So some of the things I carried along with me. And we're here, some of us from the from you know back in the days, to teach you guys. I mean, there's a little bit more than about an any, but you know it does play a part when you want to put on a two piece, and you have a perfect belly button. We don't need surgery. To get our bodies the way we want them to be. And that's the point that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm trying to come at. But this podcast is not about that. And we're going to talk about that in another podcast. I just wanted to throw it out there because I will be talking about it very soon. I love you guys. This is Miss J.D. Diamond, Jackie, Deja, whatever y'all call me. I got a million and one names. Remember, stay safe and businesses. Give your employees safety training. I'll talk to you soon.